It's a good day. New telescope. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Yes, it is a good day when a telescope shows up. This is a Skywatcher Heritage 150P Newtonian reflector. Skywatcher sent this to me for review. Thank you very much, Skywatcher. I have no intention of keeping this after the review period. So, well, what is it? It's a telescope, an astronomical telescope designed for looking up at the night sky. And the carton that you see over on the side there, this whole telescope just lifts right out. It's completely assembled. You don't have to do anything for it, except you clip this red dot reflex finder on it, and you put the eyepiece in the eyepiece holder, and you're good to go. In fact, in theory, from the unboxing, you could be observing in less than five minutes. All right, so it doesn't look like a telescope when you first get it. In fact, it kind of swivels on this thing and you'll see it's back heavy. Well, the reason is because this is a collapsible truss tube design. So there are two knobs that you loosen here. And as soon as you do that, you can pull the truss out like this and you lock it in place. Now it is balanced and you have your telescope. Let's take the dust cover off. So again, this design is one of a Newtonian reflector. Light is gathered in the back here by a mirror, in this case, a six inch mirror. The light is then deflected to this flat mirror, but it's at an angle here, puts the light up into the eyepiece. You take the cap off the eyepiece like this, and this is where you look, and this is how you focus. To change magnifications, you change eyepieces. So by the way, this is one of the few times I've actually been able to show this angled secondary mirror. This is almost always covered by a tube or a shroud of some kind, so nice to be able to show that to you. So the telescope comes with the scope itself, the red dot reflex sight finder, a 25 millimeter eyepiece here yielding about 30 power, a somewhat higher power eyepiece of 10 millimeter length yielding about 75 power, this is a collimation tool that's used for aligning the optics, should you have to do that. I didn't have to in this case, the optics come pretty well aligned out of the factory. So a telescope is a device that gathers light. That's its main function. We can step outside and look with our eyes, but unfortunately our eyes will only open to yeah, about seven millimeters or so in diameter. And that's only when we're very young. As we get older, that number gets smaller. It can get to six millimeters, five millimeters, or sometimes even smaller as we get older. I know, life isn't fair. But if we have a telescope that gathers more light for us, in this case, six inches worth with that mirror, the dim objects up there suddenly become visible. So all other things being equal, buy the telescope that has the larger aperture, the larger mirror or lens. This has a practical limit, of course, because as telescopes get above that six, eight, 10 inch range, they start getting large to the point where you lose your motivation to take it out. So for most beginners, we recommend a telescope somewhere in that six to eight inch range. It gathers enough light so that you can see things up in the night sky, but they're not so big that you're going to lose your motivation to take the telescope out. So in this case here, with this collapsible design, I'm trying to think, this is quite small. I'm hard pressed to think of any six inch reflector that is this compact. I mean, they've really done a good job of just shrinking this thing down to the point where you can put this thing almost anywhere. In fact, people seeing this for the first time may assume that it's a four and a half inch. Okay, so let's take it outside and see how it performs. So here we are outside with the telescope, and as with any tabletop model, one of your biggest challenges is going to be finding something to set it on. What you set it on does have to be very sturdy, and it has to be something that you can walk around. Many beginners are often surprised at how steady the object is you set it on has to be. This actually isn't good enough. It's a tub of some kind. I just have this as a stopgap solution. I know that some of you will take these tubs and modify them, You'll brace them, put weights at the bottom, modify the top so that it's nice and flat and sturdy, and put lips at the edges so that the telescope doesn't fall off. That last factor, by the way, is pretty important. You might be sliding this thing around in the dark without realizing it, get too close to the edge. You don't want a six inch mirror falling on the ground. 
So I used to have one of these. I wasn't satisfied with the way I built it, so I took it apart. So right now I'm between these. So this is actually, you can see this shaking a little bit. This is gonna be unacceptable under the night sky. So when you get this thing set up, one of the first things you're going to have to do is align the finder. Many beginners are surprised to learn that once you put the finder on, it may not be perfectly aligned with the main telescope itself. It's usually pretty close and you can change this. What you do is you aim the telescope towards a distant object. I've got a couple of candidates over in the horizon there. I've got a mailbox I can aim this at. I've got the top of a telephone pole and there's a couple of trees I can do. So what you do is you aim the telescope at whatever distant object you want to look at. If you're new at this, this can take you a few minutes. It's fine, it's perfectly normal. Then turn on the red dot sight. It could be off by a little bit. If it is, make adjustments on both axes until the red dot is aligned to whatever the telescope is looking at. And by the way, amateur astronomers, little things make us happy. Aligning finders and knowing that it, it's on, that makes us happy. So once you do get this thing under the night sky, I found this telescope to be very pleasant to use. Under the low power eyepiece, I had no trouble seeing the rings of Saturn, four moons on Jupiter, and two cloud belts on the surface of Jupiter. Moving to deep sky, it's late summer right now, I had no problem seeing the showpiece objects in the sky, like the Dumbbell Nebula, M13, that's the globular in Hercules, M92, that's the other globular in Hercules, M3 and M5 are also good globulars to look at, as is M15. If I have good southern horizons, there are many, many objects in Sagittarius to look at. Those looked fine also. So one final advantage of having this tub arrangement here is when you're done observing, you can collapse this down like this. Move the telescope down. This chair that I have disassembles like this. You can put the telescope inside the tub, get the right size tub. You can put this entire arrangement in your car ready for easy deployment. Okay, so those of you who are a little bit more advanced may appreciate this feature. The entire tube comes off, so you can loosen this knob and this comes off. The entire optical tube comes off and there is a plate at the bottom here. This is what they call a Vixen compatible plate. It's a universal standard now among small and mid-sized mounts. Okay, so if you're curious what that changeover looks like, should you want to take it off the mount, I have this equatorial mount here, and this is a Celestron C6 schmidt cassegrain so put that down. We'll go ahead and remove the optical tube here. And this plate just fits on here like this. The changeover is pretty easy actually. And then all you have to do is raise this, take off the dust cap, and you can be observing. So it's not perfect because what happens is you can't rotate the tube. If you're new at this, uh, you may not realize that's an issue, but with these things swinging all over the place, it's kind of a, a nice thing to be able to rotate the tube. But again, can't have everything at this price. So because the moon was up and because I happen to have my trusty planetary imager here, I took this and I put this in here. There, The moon has been up the past few nights. I'm not sure the designers meant for you to use it this way, but what the heck, I had the equipment, let's give it a shot. I ran a capture and I got this image of the moon. Okay, so are there any drawbacks to this telescope? Well, of course, it's a $280 piece of equipment. We're squarely in budget territory here. You can't expect the world. Luckily, I don't think any of this stuff is a deal breaker. It's more in the category of convenience. So first of all, the eyepieces are of decent quality. I think if you're brand new to the hobby, they're gonna be fine for a while, but at some point, you're probably going to want to replace those. In a similar vein, the focuser here is a helical type. Some people don't like these. You twist the eyepiece in the holder instead of using the traditional rack and pinion. I didn't find a problem with it. Normally, when you find focus with it, you don't have to change it much anyway, so you're only going to have to deal with it for a short time if you don't like the helical focuser. 
There was a little bit of play in the focuser in here, so that didn't bother me either. It tended to settle in a place that was okay. Uh, and also the, this helical, it's just a giant screw is all it is. It can unthread if you're not too careful. You can just unthread the whole thing and maybe something could fall out. So people have expressed concern about this open secondary here. Number one, that it could do over on a damp night. And number two, that it can collect glare. And the glare issue to me was more important because if you set this up in a bright area where there are lights on your house or street lights, they can actually interfere with this and sort of blow out the view and you won't see anything. You could, if you wanted to, fashion a shroud of some kind that goes over this. So again, any drawbacks to the telescope, I think do fall under the category of quality of life issues and many of them are addressable the eyepiece, the shroud, this sort of thing. And it almost feels like any objection you could make to the telescope could be counteracted by the phrase, yeah, but it's a six inch reflector for $280. Where else are you gonna find this? It collapses down into a space where you can put it almost anywhere. You could hide it in the trunk of your car. You can put it in the back of a closet. And in fact, she might not even know you bought it. Okay, so do you have any other options in this budget price range? Surprisingly, yes, you do. And some of them come even from Skywatcher's own catalog. This is the 6-inch 150p. They make a smaller 130p, that's the 5-inch version of one of these, a little bit smaller, a little bit cheaper, somewhere around $230 US at the time of filming. You can go smaller still and get the trusty old Orion Star Blast, that's a 4.5-inch version of one of these, somewhere in that $210 to $220 price range. You can also go larger and get a traditional solid tube floor standing model, six inch F8 and eight inch F6 Dobsonians. Those are the ones that are most commonly recommended for beginners looking for a longer term solution if you're going to get serious in this hobby. Again, any and all of these are recommended. Just pick the one that suits your budget, your lifestyle, and your needs. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.